Hey guys, back again, October 15th. Unbelievable. It feels like I'm about halfway through this horror movie thon. <laughs> um, but I'm going to be talking tonight about El Orfanado or The Orphanage. This is a Spanish film, I think. I talk about things that I don't know all the time. Like, I talked about. The Nightmare on Elm Street 3 the other night, talking about how I thought it was directed by Wes Craven, and it's not. Of course, Wes Craven created Freddy Krueger and A Nightmare on Elm Street, but uh, there was a different director for that one. But um, This one, I thought, the director was Guillermo del Toro. I don't know how to even pronounce his name, but he did Pan's Labyrinth and Kronos, and he's done a lot of good movies. I haven't seen some, a lot of them, like The Devil's Backbone. I've heard that's really good. Guillermo, Guillermo, well, sorry. Okay, anyways. Yes, he's also a character in Death Stranding, which is pretty awesome. But, the video game. Anyway, it's a Spanish horror movie. I watched it with my mom the other night. It's a ghost story, so it's a different kind of horror movie. And I don't know if I've covered any ghost stories yet. Um, think about all the other 14 movies that I did. I mean, not really. Hmm. Can't even remember what I did. No, I don't think so. This might be the first ghost movie, but it might not be the only one. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's a really good movie. It's um, all in Spanish, though, so it's English subtitles, and uh, when I brought it to my mom's, I didn't know that. I was like, oh, I don't know if mom's going to like this, but uh, I think she read along with it, but I also read out loud a lot um, just to help, but uh, I think she understood what was going on. It's pretty simple, too, and it's kind of slow. Um, it does have some creepy moments. It has, you know, an overall kind of creepy atmosphere because it takes place in this big mansion, and it's really just a tragic movie, and it's really just depressing and sad overall, more than even frightening. It reminds me of some other ghost movies I've seen, but I can't put my thumb, my finger on it. So, there are a lot of good ghost movies. Um, obviously, like The Ring and The Grudge pop up to mind, because those are popular like Asian or Japanese ghost stories that came over to America and had remakes that were really popular. But, you know, the Japanese ghost movies are a little different where you see, like, the spooky ghosts and a little more pop-up scares and stuff. I don't know if this is the first Spanish horror uh, ghost movie that I've seen, but uh, <sighs> there's a lot of older ones that I watch, like The Innocence and The Changeling are really good ghost movies if you looked up a lot of, you know, what are the best ones. Of course, there's Casper. I'm just kidding. But that involves a ghost, but it's not a horror thing, so. And there's just, there's a lot of them. I don't know if this movie was really my thing, but it's really, it is a really good movie. It's really good, but it's really depressing. And... But yeah, the way it's filmed, the way it looks, and the acting in it, and all that stuff is like pretty superb. So, like I said, uh, Del Toro did not direct it, but his name's on the cover, like in large, <laughs> uh, above the title, and um, he presented it, whatever that means. Um, so, I think he had some involvement in it, but uh, it's not really a shame to him, because I think it lives up to his standard. Basically, the movie, we see, we start off like, like an orphanage in the old times, and there's a girl, there's a bunch of girls and kids, and they're playing, and one of the girls basically is going to get adopted or whatever, and then we like cut to the future to where that girl is now grown up, and she's returning to that orphanage, which is not an orphanage anymore, but it's for sale as a house, it's like a mansion, so she gets it because I think that she wants to start her own orphanage or something like that. Like, or she loved the place and she missed it and she wanted to go live back there again. And she has a husband and they have a son, but we find out that their son is not actually their son. He's actually an adopted son and he actually has HIV and his name is Simon. Simon, Simon. His mom always calls for him. Simon. <laughs> But Simon has a couple of imaginary friends that he talks to, and 
and he has to take medication for his HIV daily. And uh, he doesn't know that he was adopted, and he doesn't know really about his condition, just that he takes these pills or whatever. Uh, but he has these imaginary friends, and this mansion is like on a beach, and there's like a cave close to it. They, they venture to the cave, and Simon says that he met like a new invisible friend there or whatever, and he's talking to him, and, and you know, the mother's like, let's come home, and Simon leaves like seashells for like a trail to the mansion so that his invisible friend can find the way into the home. Well, anyway... He says that, you know, he's met like six, he has like six friends now, like six invisible friends or something, and he draws pictures of them, and uh, he says that, you know, they play a game, they're like, they're like pirates, they want to steal treasure or whatever, and like they steal something that you love, and they replace it with something else, uh, like some, they, they take something that belongs to you, and like they replace it with something else to kind of lead you on this trail, to where uh, you find, if you find the treasure, then you can make a wish. And basically, like, he had, like, a box or whatever. He said that he had these golden coins that were a treasure, and they were, like, in a box or something. And um, instead, uh, the, the gold coins weren't there. It was something else. I don't remember exactly how it went. But, like, let's just say that there was sand in there. So, like, oh, well, where do you find sand? you know, in the mansion, like, besides the beach, like, they would find, like, you know, f a flower pot or something that had sand in it, and, like, they would find another clue, like, in the sand that would lead them to something else, like, a key that would lead them to a drawer or whatever. Well, there was this lady who mysteriously pops up and says that she knows about Simon and stuff, and, uh, she wants to talk about his condition, and, um, she's, like, with social services, and the mother's, like, I never, like, called for you or anything it's she was kind of strange and she had these files and these files were put away or whatever locked away but when simon played this game with his mom it ended up leading to this drawer that had these files in there and then he's he he freaked out at the mom and uh, he said that the invisible friend told him that he was adopted and that He's like, you're not my mother, and, like, the invisible friend told him that he had HIV and everything, so he, like, figured everything out. Anyway, they have a party where they invite a bunch of people and their kids. I think they were thinking about adopting more kids or something, but there's a party with everybody's wearing masks and stuff, and the mother's like, I want you to come downstairs and see our guests, you know, play with the other kids or whatever, and Simon's like, uh... I want you to uh, see my other friend's house. I don't, I don't remember what his name, his, the kid's name was, the other invisible friend or whatever, Timothy or something that started with a T, I don't remember. But he's like, I want you, he's like, he's, he has a little house and I want to show you his little house. And the mother's like, not now, like, come and see the guests. And he's like, no, like, I want you to see the house. And like, he's screaming, like, he refuses to go. And then she slaps him and she's like, you've got to come. And he's like, like, no, whatever, like, she leaves. Well, he ends up, like, disappearing, and they can't find him. And this, so they think that he, like, drowned or died, so they send, you know, a watch group into the cave and everything to try to find him. And uh, basically, they can't find him. And it, like, it cuts to, like, six months later, and, like, the search is still going on. Like, she's like, I know he's alive out there somewhere. I want to find my son, Simon. So that all kind of happens, like, somewhat early. It's, like, the first part of the movie. And, like, the mo the major part of the movie is, the story is that the mother is, like, determined to find her son. She's determined that he's still alive. But there's some weird things that happen, too. Like, at that party, um, there's a kid with, like, a, a sackcloth, like, mask over his head or whatever. And he shows up, like, in the hallway. And he, like, shoves her into the bathroom and, like, slams the door and, it, like, breaks her fingernail or whatever she like falls back into the bathtub and you know she doesn't know like if that was simon or what and somehow whatever they start thinking like weird things are happening in the house they end up thinking that there's ghosts and um for whatever reason i don't remember but they have like a medium 
come and check out the house and they set up cameras everywhere and this woman like goes into a trance and walks around the rooms to see if like she can see any ghosts or talk to anybody and she sees like sick kids in the room and kind of freaks out and stuff goes on and well the husband the husband gives uh the wife this necklace that his mother his grandmother gave him or something or his aunt and it's like some kind of saint or something like you know like catholics have and he's like here i'm lending you this so um for good luck or whatever like until we find simon he's like i'm just letting you borrow it and then you can give it back Well, he ends up getting fed up with all this crap, the search for Simon and having the mediums and stuff. And he's like, we just need to move away. We just need to move on and everything. And, and she doesn't want to. But she ends up being like, you know, let's uh, let me stay in the house for like two days by myself. Like, I have to do this. Like, you can go and then like, I'll I'll leave after two days. And she tries to recreate the orphanage like the way it was um, with the rooms and how she dresses and stuff and um, there was this game in the beginning where she's playing with the kids when she was little where she would like knock on a tree like one two three and then turn around and the kids would come up to her when she was knocking but when she turned around like they would freeze like so when she went back to knocking they would move forward until finally they touched her and they're like tag you're it well, um, okay, I forgot, I just remembered a part that I forgot about that happens in here kind of big, because I told you about the search game, the search game that he played. Well, that ends up happening with her, and she gets led onto a search, and she's like, oh, you want to play with me, like the ghosts or whatever, like you're trying to play a game with me. She ends up discovering, like, bodies of children, like bones and stuff. It leads her to where these dead children's bodies are, and then that's when... That's when, you know, the police get the bodies and stuff, and I think that's when they find, they get the medium and stuff, okay? Whatever, so. But when she's in the house by herself in the final part of the film, and she ends up, like, recreating it like the orphanage, like I said, she plays that game where she knocks on the wall, and then all of a sudden, like, kids do appear, and they're, like, behind her, and they're follow they're coming up to her. And eventually, they're, like, tag, you're it, um... Okay, another part that I just forgot that I mentioned, okay. The creepy lady, the social services lady that shows up, she appears a couple of times. One time she's, she's like in the shed, like the mother hears something at night and uh, she goes to the shed and that woman's in there and then she like runs off and uh, so that creeps her out. Then later on she spots her like in town or whatever while they're in their car or something. She's walking with a carriage and she thinks that she has Simon, but like she gets hit by a truck or whatever. And she's like, oh my god, she thought Simon was, like, in the carriage, so she looks like, the carriage is, like, underneath the truck, and she looks, and it's just, like, a doll, and, uh, her husband's trying to help the woman, and he's like, no, she's dead, they, like, put something over her face, like a jacket or whatever. The mother sees something on her necklace, like, uh, a, uh, whistle or something i don't know what it is but for whatever reason she wants to try to grab it and then all of a sudden like the dead woman like reaches up and, like grabs her and like the the jacket or whatever comes off her face and like her bottom jaw's gone and her tongue's just like sticking out she's like ah. <laughs> that's one of the creepy parts of the movie like there's a couple scares like that like that's one of them it's like oh man and then she just kind of stops like uh oh, just dies like she's just gone again but uh my mom went to the bathroom, like, right at that moment, like, right before that. I was like, oh, my God, you missed that all. I'm like, probably a good thing. I probably would have given her nightmares if she would have seen that. But, so back again to when she's in the home by herself. She knocks, she plays the game, and the kids are there, and they run. Well, she ends up getting led to this uh, little, like, underneath the stairwell, there's a little door there, a little closet space kind of area. She was in there before, like, Something, like, knocks stuff out of it. Well, part of the game that they let her, the search game or whatever, she also had, like, a doorknob. And this doorknob 
there was like a hole in the wall in that closet that's like under the stairs. So she puts the doorknob there and there's like a secret door and there's like a secret path down there. And this was the, the, one of the invisible dead kids, uh, little room down there. And so that's kind of like what her son was talking about. Simon's little house. Like he discovered this and basically spoiler, let's cut to the chase here. Simon is there. Simon's dead. So Simon died down there. So she finally finds her son and he's dead, like underneath in the basement of this house in the secret room. So it's really sad. And she ends up like taking him upstairs and she basically ends up overdosing on pills and kills herself. And then, uh, her son's like alive all of a sudden. And like all the kids that were in the orphanage are there and they're like all happy. Like you're going to watch over us now. And my mom's like, Oh, the kids are all alive. I'm like, well, the mom's dead. Like she committed suicide. We just saw her eat like a bottle of pills. I'm like, it's okay. So it's kind of like a good ending, but it's kind of not. And then after that, we see the, um, husband come back to the mansion like alone. And he finds uh, that necklace that he gave to her. And he kind of smiles. So he's like, oh, he got it back. Like, she found Simon, so she doesn't need it anymore. So that's basically the end of the movie. And I just, I know I just went through the plot, but... And also, in reality, I think that uh, if you commit suicide, the likelihood is not a happy ending. <laughs> You're probably going to wake up in hell and torment. So, and I mean, that would kind of be torment, just... I mean, to be with her son and stuff, again, I'd rather be with the Lord in heaven, but, so, I don't really agree with all the philosophies of this movie, but that's okay, I understand, it's just, it's try the message, that it's just a, it's a dark, scary ghost story, and I don't even believe in ghosts, so, you know, uh, but yeah, it's kind of slow, the, the part with the medium and stuff is pretty cool, um, it's just, yeah, I mean, it all builds up, and it's all a lot of story, if you like the story. Um, really, I mean, it's just really depressing at the end, though. It's like, the whole movie is like the search for her son, and she's like determined that he's still alive, and like, finally she discovered the truth about like everything, but like the truth is that he was dead down there, and then you know, it's like, what if she would have went down there with him, right? Like, you can't change the past, but I mean, I think there's kind of that aspect, too, because he was, like, begging her, like, you know, let me show you, let me show you this place, and she's like, no, like, you know, and she slapped him, and it's like, later on that day, like, he died down there, it's like, man, depressing, 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 and then she just kills herself. Hmm. You know, maybe that's why she killed herself, because, you know, she felt the guilt. I don't know. But it is a really good movie. But at the same time, like watching The Nightmare on Elm Street 3 before that, I thought it was, like, way better, because it was just so cool. But, yeah, I mean, there's Guillermo del Toro, see. Um... I don't know what else to say, but, I mean, if you're really into ghost stories, definitely. I definitely recommend it. I'm sure you'd love it. I know that that's kind of a popular thing these days. There's a ton of ghosts, you know, they're like a dime a dozen, <laughs> these ghost stories. But uh, this is one that's done really well. There's a couple of spooky scenes. But if you're really looking to be scared to death or disturbed really disturbed, no, but I mean, really sad, yeah, <laughs> really sad, so, anyway, that's gonna be it, I mean, I'll, I'll see if I can read the back of this, but I'll show the cover, there's the, the sackhead friend, one of his invisible friends, so, and that's his mother, and she's dressed up as one of the orphanage women, you see Four stars, superior ghost story. You see how it has Guillermo del Toro, like, <laughs> makes it look like he directed or something.
you see if the mansion I wonder whose mansion it really is sometimes you know when you see these mansions and these sets are really nice cars and stuff it's like did they rent these or borrow it from somebody is it like the directors is it the actors or like where do they where do they get these from this is a terrifying horror thriller well worth seeing by claudia pung or pug whatever usa today this movie is fairly recent, but I think it was 2007 or something, so I mean, maybe that's not really recent, but. It says, award-winning visionary Guillermo del Toro, Guillermo, Guillermo, I need to, he did Pan's Labyrinth and Hellboy, and acclaimed director J.A. Boyana present a positively terrifying says John Anderson of Newsday. New vision of the classic ghost story. Returning to their childhood home, a mysterious seaside orphanage, Laura and her family unknowingly unleash a long-forgotten evil spirit. Now thrust into a chilling nightmare, Laura must confront the memories of her past before the ghosts of the orphanage destroy her and everything she has ever loved. And we find out, basically, I think, that the creepy social services lady is the mother of the kid with the sackcloth mask. And the reason why he wore that cloth mask was because his face was, like, horribly disfigured. And we see him without the mask on also. But I think that he was picked on and made fun of by kids and stuff like that and kind of tormented because of his disfigurement. So it's just depressing stuff on top of depressing. And it's not the most depressing movie I've ever seen, but it's definitely on the high end. Um, but yeah. A little bit of blood when she breaks her fingernail. She basically kind of pulls her fingernail off, and that's nasty. But really, it's not bloody, gory, stuff like that. It's a lot of story and just... Just spookiness. And it's not a lot of, you know, like the poltergeist or something, like everything, like moving on its own and stuff. There's like doors kind of opening or whatever, like just little, little subtle things. Not like a stake crawling across the table or whatever. But yeah, it's good. So that's it. All right, guys. God bless. And, uh, until next time, see you later. This is number 15.